Welcome back to another episode of Source Decoded. This is the second video in my series about how the World Wide Web works. In the last video we gave an overview of how the Internet works. We talked about domains and the domain name service and TCP IP and how computers use these technologies to connect to each other and communicate from anywhere in the world. Today we're going to talk about the web itself and how it builds on top of the internet to do its job. So we talked about how the internet is a bunch of computers linked to each other with a network all across the world. Um, the World Wide Web is kind of like that except it's, it's a bunch of documents that live on computers all across the world that are linked to each other. Now they link to each other using a special language called HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And let's break that apart. We'll start with the markup language part. If, if you've ever been in school, you've probably had the pleasure of handing in a paper to your teacher and then getting it back with comments or notes on it. Uh, maybe the teacher got after you for having a sentence that ran on too long or putting too many ideas in a paragraph or bad punctuation or, or any of those things. The teachers will often write on the paper that you give them some of this information. What they're essentially doing is marking up the paper that you turned in with information about the information that you gave them. Or maybe if you've ever seen a map or a directory of a mall, they have the map with all the squares of where the different stores in the mall are, but often the squares will be color-coded to communicate what kind of store it is or, or what it's for. In that case, the core information, the core content on the map, which is the location of the stores in the mall, has been marked up with information about that information, what the stores are for, so to see what this looks like in HTML, let's go to some raw content that I've got here. Now this is just this is just text content and you as a human can look at this content and and figure out kind of what's going on here. This looks like a title um, and we've got some paragraphs going on here. This looks like it might be maybe a subtitle or a title for a subsection and paragraphs, you know, some of this and uh, a list of things. The computer is not as smart as you though, so in order for the computer to have any idea of what any of this information is for, we're going to mark it up, and we'll do that using HTML. HTML uh, marks up items using what are called tags, so I'm going to put some tags into this, this document here. I'm going to wrap this in an H1, and I'm going to wrap this in a P. My text editor is trying to be helpful by closing the tags for me. This is a P as well. Now an HTML tag is wrapped in these angle brackets and the part between the angle brackets right here that you see this H1 is the tag name. And in order to communicate the, the specific piece of content that I want to add this H1 information to, we wrap that in a set of H1 tags. Here's the opening tag, and here's the closing tag. So what is inside belongs to that H1 tag. Same thing for P here. H1 is heading level 1. It's the most important heading on the page. A P makes a paragraph. This I'm going to give an H2 because it is a second level heading and I'm just going to go ahead and mark up the rest of this page. Okay so I finished marking up this content. Um, you can see I've got the H1, some paragraphs, an H2, some more paragraphs, another H2 paragraph. This here uh, used to have like one parenthesis, two parenthesis. I've turned this into an ordered list and made each one of these list items. And then I've got another H2 for the references, ordered list, and list items. I'm going to indent those so it's pretty clean out some white space. 
So HTML is a special language used for marking up documents for use on the internet. Since we have a special language, we also have a special program for interpreting that language. That program is the web browser. Chances are you're already pretty familiar with the web browser. We've got Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Internet Explorer, Safari, Opera, Firefox, there's a bunch of them. And all of these browsers are made to interpret HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. So I have an HTML file here, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it in Chrome. Okay, so I didn't really put any formatting information in that document, I just said that this part was an H1 and these were paragraphs. This is an H2 and this is an ordered list. Because I called this an ordered list, the browser's gone ahead and put numbers on it for me. And then the same thing going on here. HTML is not really a programming language because it doesn't give any logical instructions to the computer. All it's doing is giving the machine some hints about what particular pieces of content are for. H1 tags usually show up in big text, but that's not because the HTML document has told the browser to make them big. It just happens that the browser has some default ways of styling the different elements, and we'll talk about some of that stuff in a later video. HTML can really only be described as a markup language. So let's go back here just real quick and see what happens if we change some of the markup. So instead of an ordered list, I'm going to make this an unordered list. And as you go, you'll get to learn what all of these tag names mean and, and what they make the browser do. Now I'm going to reload that page and instead of numbers, I got bullets because these things aren't in any particular order. Change this back to an ordered list like I wanted. And then what happens if I change this H2 to an H3? Uh, go back and reload, and the browsers rendered that a little bit smaller. I'm go ahead and, and change that back. So that's what the markup language part of HTML means. But what about the first part? Hypertext. The term hypertext was coined by a guy named Ted Nelson clear back in the 60s. And the basic idea is that you can have a special kind of text document with, with just text content in it, but certain parts of this document can point to other parts of the document or, or even other documents completely. And those special parts were called hyperlinks. And so hypertext is this special text file that has hyperlinks in it that can jump around to other pieces of content in different places. And if you want an interesting history lesson, you can go to the Wikipedia article on hypertext and kind of see what the evolution of this idea is. So for the web, it's the hypertext part of HTML that makes the web work. Let's go ahead and add some hyperlinks to this HTML document of ours. So we're back here on the code, and you'll notice in this paragraph, I've got this uh, one right here. Uh, you've, you've seen this in magazines, I'm sure, where they'll put a link to a footnote reference down at the bottom. And these, the reference at the bottom is a, a link to a Wikipedia page about Sir Tim Berners-Lee. So this is hypertext. I don't actually have to make the reader do that reference work. I can make the browser do it for them. So I'm going to wrap his name in an A tag. And then put this address up here in the href property. Get rid of that list item. And now if we look at it, we'll see that this has turned into a link. I can click on that link and then we go to the Wikipedia article about Sir Tim Berners-Lee. That's how the hypertext in HTML works. Whenever you put an A tag in an HTML document, you're creating a reference from that document to a place somewhere else. Imagine you went into the library at the local university into the place where they keep the scholarly journals. Articles in scholarly journals are always referencing prior research done in other articles in other journals. That's part of the way science works is we, we reference stuff that's happened before. So imagine you're reading one of these journals 
and you come across a reference to another article and usually it'll have the author's name and a page number or something like that right there. Now imagine if every time you came across one of those there was a piece of string stuck to it and if you followed that piece of string it would point you to another page in that same journal or another journal on the same shelf or another journal on a different shelf. If you were to step back from that aisle and look at all of these strings going from all these from from books to other books it would look a lot like a web and that's what the World Wide Web is. It's just a bunch of documents that are all pointing to each other all over the place. It kind of makes sense, right? And that's all an A tag is. It's a piece of string from one document to another. They just happen to live other places on the internet. So let's talk about how the A tag actually does its job. If we look here on the href property, we'll cover this href business in more detail in another video, I'm sure. Uh, we see that we gave it this bit of text here. This is called a URL or Uniform Resource Locator. That's just nerd speak for the address of something on the internet. And it has a few parts that we'll talk about. This first part is the protocol. It tells the web browser how it should talk to the server on the other end. The second part is the domain which is the server's address. We talked about that a little bit in the video about the internet. This last part is the path of the document on the, on the server. So when you click on a link, this is basically what happens. The browser looks at this address or this URL. It's going to look at the domain and then use the DNS to turn that into an IP address. It's going to open a connection to the server listening to that address either on port 80 if this is an unsecure connection or on port 443 if it's a secure one. This one is secure. HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. So we're going to open a connection on port 443 and once that connection is open we are going to ask for the document that lives at wiki slash Tim Berners-Lee. The server is going to look up that document, hand it back through the internet to our browser. The browser is going to interpret the HTML and then render it on the page. Now that might seem like kind of a silly simple idea that we can have one document point to another, but you just kind of have to take my word for it that it's a big idea. Imagine Wikipedia wasn't a website on the internet because the web and the internet didn't exist. Um, it was still the world's free and open encyclopedia, but in order to get it, you had to call a telephone number or write somebody a letter and order it. So they would ship it to you on a physical media, like a CD or some DVDs or something, and then you, you'd wait for two weeks for that to arrive. You'd finally get it in the mail, and then you'd take the first one of those discs and you put it in your computer and you'd run some kind of installer program. And once the installer had finished, then you could finally launch the encyclopedia. So you double click the icon and then you'd get a table of contents. You want to learn about trees. So you go through the table of contents and you find trees. You click on it and then you get the article about trees. So you're reading about trees and you come across this word photosynthesis that you'd really like to learn more about. You know your, art, your encyclopedia probably has an article about that. So you back out to the table of contents, you find photosynthesis and you click on that. But instead of seeing the article, the encyclopedia asks you to put in disk 6 because your computer didn't have enough hard drive space to hold the whole encyclopedia. So in order to use the encyclopedia, you had to put in the disk. So you take out disk 1 and then you find disk 6 and then you put it in and close the drawer and then you wait for it to read and then here's the article about photosynthesis. You finish reading about that and you want to go back to trees so you step back out, click on trees, got to switch disks, and then you're finally looking at the trees. It's a lot of work, and you'd probably just give up partway through and think, ah, switch disks to know about photosynthesis? Never mind. The other problem is that as soon as you ordered that set of CDs, actually, as soon as the CDs were stamped at the factory, the information on them was already obsolete. Somebody had already learned something more about something, and um, the information you got was already old. A website, in a sense, 
is really like an application that installs itself and uninstalls itself and is always current as long as whoever maintains the website is keeping it up to date. And in the near future, a lot more of our software is probably going to work this way. In fact, there's emerging technologies on the web that allow serious, intense software, like software written by Autodesk, to run on the web browser. And they've already started porting things like that to the browser. So it is kind of a big idea. And it all grows out of this, this concept of linking documents to each other. And, and the, the technologies and the things we're going to talk about in future videos build on this idea. And I hope you'll stick around through this series as we learn about it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.